As an option seller, I spend a lot of time just trying to find things to trade. What's actually saved me a lot of time is creating custom scans to weed through the tens of thousands of potential trades, and then really narrowing down the list to only those that meet my most important criteria. That criteria will obviously be different from person to person, but today we're going to go through a scan that I like to use within Thinkorswim to find vertical credit spreads that I might actually be interested in trading. Now, if you are brand new to scans, then this is probably going to seem like a lot, but I will go through it slowly, and with a little bit of time and practice, I promise you, you will get the hang of it. Now, in order to begin, we will start by coming up here to the Scan tab, and we're actually going to start by using the Stock Hacker. The reason we're going to start here is because we need to first weed out those companies that we have no interest in trading. After we've done that, we can then use this scan that we create here to then scan for spreads on those underlines that meet our criteria. And we're going to get to that a little bit later. Looking down below the stock hacker, you can actually see I've already got a scan preloaded right here. And in this case, I've named it the High Volatility Stock Scanner. If you were to look through the list here, you can get an idea of what it is this scan is looking for. But beginning at the top, the very first thing it says is that all these companies in this watch list are going to have weekly options attached to them. You could always add that for yourself by simply clicking on the box here. Then within the menu down below, you're going to find the menu marked public S through W. Come on over to the right and then look at the very bottom and click on weeklies. So not only do all of the stocks that appear in the watch list below have options, they also have weekly options which then tends to suggest that they're at least fairly liquid. The exchanges saw enough people trade the monthly contracts and thought there was enough interest in creating the weeklies to make it worth it to them. So that's going to be the first thing, narrowing it down to only those stocks that have weekly options. Next up here, you can see I've got a stock filter, which is looking for the mark price, essentially just the current price of the stock right now, to have a minimum price of at least $10 a share. So I don't want any stocks that trade for less than $10 a share to appear in the list. Next in the list here, you can see I've got another stock filter, and this one is going to be looking for the market cap of the company to be greater than 1,000 millions or a billion dollars in value. So I don't want any super small companies on this list. They've got to be worth at minimum a billion dollars. Next in the list here, you can see another stock filter, and this one is looking for the PE ratio to be greater than zero. So all I'm looking for is the company to be actually profitable, to actually be making money. The next one on the list here is another stock filter, but this one is looking for the vol index or the volatility index to be at least 40%, which will then mean for me that the options will at least be worth something. I'm going to get something for selling them. You can see the next one on the list here kind of goes along with that, and this one is a study filter looking for the IV percentile, which is actually the IV rank, to be somewhere between 35% and 95%. Meaning not only is the overall volatility for this underlying greater than 40%, but that's also fairly high for this particular stock. That one can be a bit confusing, so in order to add that, we would just come up here to the add a filter box in the upper right hand corner. We would then click on the filter mark study down here below. You'll then see the default study filter that gets added is the ADX crossover, but if you were to click on that, then look in the menu below and find the volatility section, you're actually going to be able to find the IV percentile, which if we remember back is actually the IV rank right here, and all you have to do is click on that. But again, since I've already got it, we can go ahead and delete that by coming back up here and just hitting the X button on the right hand side of that brand new filter. And now the final filter here in the list is another study filter, but this one is going to be looking for the average volume of the underlying stock to be greater than a million shares per day. This is another one of those basic filters that I like to use to weed out those companies that don't really trade. Since if no one is trading the underlying stock itself, they're probably not trading the options contracts. Well, once I've made this, and this is going to be my basic criteria that I like to look for, if I now wanted to save it, I'll just come up here to the menu icon in the upper right hand corner. Then within that drop down menu, I'm going to come over here and hit save scan query, and then go ahead and give it a name. In my case, I'm going to leave it as the high vol stock scanner. So I'm going to come down here and hit save, hit OK, since I am going to override it. And now that that's done, I've created a scan to find those stocks that meet all my basic criteria. I can then use that in the spread hacker here above 
and then find vertical spreads on those underlines. Now, in order to do that, the very first thing I have to do is come up here to the search box at the very top where it currently says all. Within that menu, I can then specify the type of spread that I wanted to trade, which in this case is going to be a vertical spread. So we'll come down here and click on vertical. Next up, in order to use that scam that I just created to find those high volatility underlines, we'll need to come up here above where it says spreads for all symbols and go ahead and click on that. I can then find the personal section down below, which is where all of my watch lists or scans are going to be stored. And just the right there, you can actually find the scan that we just made, the high volatility stocks. And if I click on that, now when I create a spread scan, it's actually going to cross-reference that scan that we just made and only find verticals on those underlines. We can now begin by adding our spread criteria one at a time by coming up here and adding our very first spread filter up here in the upper right-hand corner. The very first filter that I'm going to be adding, if I come over here and click on the drop-down menu, I'm going to be looking for the days till expiration. For me personally, I like to trade verticals in the 30 to 60 day range to capitalize on that time decay. So we're going to come over here and put the minimum at 30. Highlight that, type in 30. And then for the maximum, we'll put 60. So all of the vertical spreads have to fall in the 30 to 60 day time frame. We can now add our next spread filter. Come on up here and click add spread filter. Coming back over here to the brand new filter that we just added. Let's go ahead and say for this next one, we're going to be adding a filter for the mark price. Using this mark filter, we can now find spreads that trade for a certain value. And in my case, because I generally like to sell five point wide credit spreads, this is gonna be a way to weed out a lot of spreads by first specifying the minimum. So the minimum I'm willing to sell this thing for. And let's just come up here and set that minimum at, let's say a dollar. So I wanna get at least $100 for selling a spread. But I'm also going to set my cap to about, let's say, $2.25. Since really I should never be getting paid anything more than that on a five-point wide spread, and even that's kind of pushing it. But now that that's done, the very next filter I'll be looking to add is going to be for max profit. So I'll come up here and add another spread filter. We can come over here to the drop-down menu, and this one, again, is going to be the max profit filter. Now, in this example, we're going to be looking for the max profit to be at least 25% of the risk. So I'm going to come up here and set the minimum to 25. So just as an example, so you get an idea of what this is looking for, if we were to sell a five-point wide credit spread and we collected, let's say, $1.50, that means the most we can ever make is $1.50, whereas the risk is $3.50. Essentially, just the width of the spread, $5 minus the credit. So in that example, my max profit is just over 42% of the risk. So again, I'm going to be setting the minimum at 25%. And to weed out those that are just unrealistic, I'm going to be setting the max on this to, let's say, 50%. And now that that's done, we're going to come up here and add the very last filter. And if I were to come back over here and open up the menu, that one is going to be the probability of profit filter. This is going to be the probability of making at least one penny on the trade. And for me, I'm going to put the minimum at, let's say, 65% and the maximum at, let's say, 85%. Again, that max is really just there to try and weed out the spreads that we can't really fill on. That technically meet all of our criteria, but that no one is actually going to take the other side of the trade that we could never actually sell. And now that we've got everything set, if we were to come down here below and hit scan we can now see a list of all of those spreads that meet all of our criteria right now. I could then come down here and dig into each one of these a little bit further, or just place the actual trade by simply right-clicking on the spread right here, and then clicking Create Duplicate Order. That will then actually build out the order ticket down here below to sell that vertical, it looks like, call spread against Target, and it looks like we'd be doing so for a credit of $1.08. Now, for right now, if we were to delete this out of here and just take a closer look at what this is showing us up here, you can see there are quite a few different spreads that meet our criteria, and quite a few of those are on target. Looks like JWM, VFC, but these are all going to be stocks that meet all of our criteria on the previous scan that we made. So they meet all of our high volatility scan criteria. And then above and beyond that, these are all vertical credit spreads that meet all of our criteria as well. All of these expire within the next 30 to 60 days. 
They're all trading for at least a dollar and no more than 225. They're all going to give me a max profit of at least 25% and then 50% at the maximum. And they all have a probability of profit somewhere between 65% and 80%. You can actually see all of the columns up here at the top are showing you all of that information right here. So here's the mark price, essentially what we could sell this spread for. The probability of profit right over here to the right of that. So the likelihood of us making at least a penny on this spread. And then the max profit column, just the right to make sure we're getting paid enough commensurate to the risk that we're taking. But that should cover all the basics of what you need to know to create a custom scan for yourself and find vertical credit spreads that meet all of your criteria. We covered a lot, but you can really tailor these scans in any way you want. So it is going to take a little bit of practice to really get the hang of it. Now, if you do want to learn more, consider checking out this video next. You might find it helpful as well. Otherwise, have a great rest of your week and I'll see you all on the next one.